when you were a child, somebody had to make you unhappy. Today somebody has to make you happy because this is like this. On a certain day, can I… can I risk telling you a story? Those of you who just come out of a party at six o'clock in the morning, I'm asking you, can I risk telling you a story? Because the moment I say once upon a time, people think it's bedtime. Okay, not so long ago, on a certain day, a bull and a pheasant were grazing upon the field. The bull was chomping on the grass and the pheasant was picking ticks off the bull partnership. There was a huge tree at the edge of the field and the pheasant looked up at the tree and said, Oh, alas, there was a time when I could fly to the topmost branch of the tree. Now I do not have enough strength in my wing even to get to the first branch of the tree. The bull very nonchalantly said, That's no issue. You eat a little bit of my dung every day for the next fortnight, you will get to the topmost branch of the tree. The pheasant said, Come on, what kind of rubbish is that? The bull said, really, try and see, the entire humanity is on it. Very hesitantly, the pheasant started pecking at the dung and lo, on the very first day it got to the first branch of the tree, within a fortnight it got, got to the topmost branch of the tree. Went and sat there upon the tree, just beginning to enjoy the scenery. The old farmer who was rocking on his rocking chair, saw a fat old pheasant on top of the tree, pulled out his shotgun and shot the bird off the tree. The moral of the story is, many times even bullshit can get you to the top, but it never lets you stay there. So as a… as a person thinking that a meeting somebody will get you up, Drinking a glass of wine will get you up, little entertainment will get you up. Yes, everything can get you up, but like that and again down, like that and again down. If you want this life to be super up all the time, you have to become an individual. That means you are not further divisible. You cannot be analyzed, you cannot be dissected because this is the fundamental, which is called as the individual. Personality, accumulated stuff, you can accumulate whatever you want, that's your choice. Every human being is free to accumulate whatever he or she wants, but that is individual… that is an individual choice. But the fundamental thing is the life that you are, if it doesn't come into your experience, if you don't tin turn inward, and experience the fundamental nature of this individual, you will see your well-being is very circumstantial. You need a certain incubator to be reasonably sane. If the incubator is pulled out, you will see people will sh be shattered. But today if the Western countries open up their visa regimes, I think seventy percent of the Indians will swim across the oceans and go away. So you're not running a nation, you're running an open prison. Nation is when I want to be here and make things happen, this is a nation. I want to run away because there's no other way I'm staying here, this is not a nation. If we want to make a nation, we have to build that pride. Pride will not suddenly drop upon us from the skies. We have to show our children what all great things we have done in the past, Okay, we have fallen here and there, but now it's once again time to bring back that glory. If we don't create that pride, if we don't create a sense of history in people's minds, particularly growing children and youth, how will you build… bring pride? First opportunity they get, they will leave the country <laughs> Just loosen up your life a little bit, laugh a little more, involve yourself with people around you, do things that you think is not so important. Don't do things which are very important. Do simple things. It's very important you do simple things. Very important things you're doing in your life, 
you will become dead serious. You know, Burton Russell, an Englishman, Burton Russell said, if you're beginning to think that what you're doing is very important, you need to take a holiday. So holiday does not mean coming to India. Holiday is every day in those twenty-four hours you must take a holiday from your seriousness, from yourself. Seriousness has come essentially because of your self-importance. You hold yourself as an important person. I want you to see you are like a speck of dust in this existence. Tomorrow morning if you disappear, for sure in India nobody will miss you. Even down under, they won't bother much, you know. A handful of people, they will also forget soon enough. Isn't it so? Oof! Nature does oof, you're gone. And nothing will happen in this world, everything will happen wonderfully well even if you're not there. Every human being should be aware of this every moment of his life. It does not matter what the whole world says about you. It does not matter how significant a work you're doing, you must understand that tomorrow morning the world will go on fine without you, whoever you may be. Isn't it so? If you constantly remind yourself of this, you'll have no reason to be serious. <laughs> Definitely not dead. And don't be dead now, a time will come. <laughs> it's time to be alive. <laughs> On the surface, because there is competition, you are one step ahead of somebody else and it's keeping you going. This is why <laughs> you will see most people look profoundly at their life, unfortunately, only when they fail. When failure happens, illness happens, loss happens, they will sit down and look at their life profoundly. When they're in success, they don't have the brains to look at their life profoundly, something has to go wrong. This is very unfortunate. When everything is good, you must look at your life as profoundly as possible. You don't wait for a disaster to look at your life with some profoundness. Once you are into the trap of this memory rep repeating itself, the repetitiveness of life, the repetitiveness of who you are, because personality is a limited amount of information which is going on repeating itself, will slowly cause a deep sense of depression. You may not be clinically depressive, but you are not smiling as much as you smiled when you were five years of age, that means you are moving towards depression. Before you get clinically depressed, you may be dead, that's a different thing, but it is happening to everybody. <laughs> I'm saying life is more organized than ever before on this planet. Don't complain. You have more comforts, more conveniences than any generation ever had. Yes or no? Please all of you. Yes or no? Aren't you enjoying more material comfort than your parents and your grandparents? Unless your grandfather was a maharaja or something <laughs> Don't look at me <laughs> <laughs> we, we… life is better than ever before, but we have lost the ability within ourselves because somewhere we think by fixing the outside everything will be okay. No, by fixing the outside, comfort will come, convenience will come, well-being will not come. If you're seeking well-being, in is the only way out. Pleasantness is the choice, isn't it? So why is it so much unpleasantness is happening in human experience? Because we never took charge of the inner dimension. We believe by fixing the outside, everything is going to be okay. In the last hundred, hundred and fifty years, with the advent of science and modern technology, we have fixed too many things on the outside. If you fix any more, there won't be a planet left. Yes? 
Definitely this has brought much convenience and comfort to our lives. In every way, we are the most comfortable generation ever. You, you agree with me? I know you have series of complaints about how things are not okay, but we are the most comfortable generation ever before on this planet, isn't it so? But we cannot say we are the most joyful generation on the planet, we are the most loving generation on the planet, we are the most blissed out generation on the planet, definitely not. We are complaining, complaining like crazy about everything, like never before. <laughs> this is because we fixed the outside, comfort and convenience has happened, well-being has not happened. If your interiority was handled by you consciously, you would definitely keep this in a blissful state. So is bliss the goal of life? No. Bliss is a necessary condition for life to flower to its full potential, otherwise it will remain constrained. But we, I feel, are constantly looking towards where still. Your views on this, Guruji? I can't see the audience but uh, I'm sure at least almost all the men, ninety-five percent of the men are in western clothes right now. Ladies are a little better <laughs> Why is this? Because we must understand there is no substitute for success. Okay. You may talk philosophies, you may talk culture, you may talk so many things but there is no substitute for success. Right now, in many ways, West has become the symbol of success. So if you're successful, even though the temperatures are thirty-eight degrees today, you must be in jacket and tie. I'm not commenting on their clothes, I'm saying success is the ideal always. Without what is successful, that is what everybody will aspire for. 